In the most recent episode of House of the Dragon, we saw Viserys cut his little finger on the throne. So I thought what we'd do is, we'd talk about whether or not the Iron Throne rejects people that it doesn't think are worthy of it. But before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe. You can always unsubscribe at a later date if you don't like what I'm posting. It's completely free and no hard feelings. We're going to be talking about every episode of House of the Dragon, so tune in, get on board. It's showtime, folks. Throughout the books, it's mentioned that the swords that the Iron Throne is made out of are still sharp, and you can cut yourself on them if you're not careful. There are a few instances where the throne's current occupant is said to be receiving regular wounds whilst on the throne. This is mentioned of the Mad King and Princess Rhaenyra. Magar the Cruel was even killed on the Iron Throne. Some say he was murdered by the throne itself. My question is, do you think there could be some type of magic in the Iron Throne that causes it to reject people who it deems unworthy to rule kingdoms? Or is this simply a metaphor employed by Martin? It could possibly be the other way round. People who are unworthy might just express behaviour that causes them to get cut more easily. Child kings get cut because they are fidgety. Lazy kings get cut because they slouch over it. Arrogant kings posture themselves so that they get cut, etc. The Iron Throne was designed like that, so that you have to sit on it and be watchful, alert, in a serious position, mirroring the type of mindset you have to be to be a good king, and if you're of bad character, the throne punishes you. It's almost like it's a horcrux for Aegon the Conqueror, from which his spirit can still poke kings with swords. The arms of the chair have blades on them. You have to place your fingers between the blades when you're using the armrest. Even Ned and Jaime, people in peak physical condition. I mean, look at that hunk of a man. If he was my brother, I'd... <laughs> I can't say that. That's awful. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Right, um, where were we? <laughs> it is not a direct force or power that leads to bad rulers to getting hurt on the throne. But bad rulers tend to have qualities not suited to sitting on the throne, both literally and metaphorically. For example, Joffrey sliced his hand while gesticulating like a madman. Or you could say a child in a temper tantrum, which is where he was. Viserys had his fingers cut by the throne, and I believe in the book, his fingers even got cut off, and it might have even killed him. He slipped and cut himself and went into a fever and lost two fingers, but he didn't die until two years later during a nap. It can be assumed that the infection and the death were linked. The throne is also built to impress people in many ways. It's impossibly high, almost unreachable. It's made of the spoils of war as a constant reminder of martial strength. It's scary and dangerous and hurts whoever doesn't show a proper respect. It's a symbol of the Targaryen power, the image they want the subjects to have of them. Even the dragon knew that, he destroyed the throne because of symbolism. Sorry, we won't be bashing Game of Thrones here, we're here to talk about House of the Dragon. To impress your subject, you have them. Think only a few elect can handle a throne. You need to make them think that you're worth it. That's the only way to secure the power. It'd also be a great reminder for the king who sits the Iron Throne that it's a tenuous seat at best. Just as a throne that he sits on can hurt him, the realm he rules can hurt him if he slouches or ignores the danger. Don't get too comfortable, in other words. Harkening back to the slave, muttering, remember that you are only a man to the victorious generals back during the Roman days. See what happens to the kings who take their kingship for granted, like the Mad King. Rather than respecting the position and the responsibilities and dangers inherited to it, I sort of see the Iron Throne as George R. R. Martin's version of the One Ring, a symbol of power which corrupts those who wish to world it, a thing people fight and kill over. So I think it's a possibility the throne might affect people in a similar sense, as when Jamie touched the werewood, maybe driving them crazy and or giving them visions. Then I guess the question would be, what entity might work through a throne of steel swords like Bloodraven seems to be able to work through wood? It's possible that the throne was forged using dragonfire from Balerion. Since dragons are inherently magical creatures, the throne could contain some unknown magical properties. It could also just be a bunch of melted iron and steel, so who knows really. It's ugly, it's asymmetric. It 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 uh, it's it was put together by blacksmiths, not by craftsmen and experts in furniture manufacture. Uh, 
and you have to walk up iron steps, and when a king sits on it, he's like 10 feet above everybody else in the hall, so he's in this raised position looking down on him. Aegon said a king should not sit easily. The throne cutting a king or queen is indicative of that person deviating from the very specific way of kingship Aegon believed in. The throne punishes those with the wrong morality if they're lacking personality traits. It can be harmful to the king, so why shouldn't it be harmful to the throne? I think it's supposed to parallel a mountain of a dragon as well. Those who are too anxious may be rejected by you, or accidentally cut themselves on the throne. Robert was never cut because he had good enough temperament for a king, but he never realised his full potential. Meanwhile, Queen Rhaenyra was so anxious and adamant and insecure about her ownership of the throne that she could not sleep until she claimed it, and I think that's why she ended up slicing herself on it. Same with Ares. Rhaenyra might have been a good ruler, but she would not have been a good conqueror, so she doesn't have the right temperament to sit on the throne. Sorry if I'm butchering any names here. At the end of the day, whether it is magic or not doesn't necessarily matter. Some people may believe or suspect the chair is magic, and perhaps the chair even is magic, but no one is ever likely to find out for certain. Like many superstitious and magical elements in the book, the amount of belief people put in the thing is as important or even more important than if it actually is what they think it is. It's not something I suspect we'll get any sort of definitive answer on, nor should we. Personally, I prefer the theory that it's the posture of the ruler, not necessarily the throne itself. Honestly, I'm shocked that there hasn't been a single king in the last 300 years that filed down some parts of it to make it look safe. What king who is being cut regularly would willingly subject themselves to it when it's in their power to fix it? But then again, I think it would be extremely blasphemous to alter the chair in any way. It is a 300 year old relic of the empire after all. Be a bit of a PR nightmare. It's better that they just do what the others have done and avoid sitting in it. Bring in another chair like Cersei did or just don't show up like Robert. Or chain male pants, that's also an idea. Why don't any kings put a fur or a covering on the seats and armrests? Drape a large flag over the part you sit on or touch? If they were American, they'd have a flag over that thing in an instant. What is it with Americans and letting other people know they are American? I'll never understand it. There are American flags on pretty much every household you see on Google Maps. It's, it's madness. Anyway folks, I'm going to bring it to a close there. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. You can always unsubscribe at a later date if you don't like where I'm posting. It's completely free and no hard feelings. I really appreciate you watching this video. That's all. Bye. The sky has not enough to say. The sky has far too much to say.